Acids and bases can be classified as either strong or weak. Here we'll deal with weak acids. A weak acid is an acid that is less than 100% ionized in aqueous solution. An example of a weak acid is acetic acid, CH3COOH. It reacts with water to produce a hydronium ion and an acetate or a thanoate ion. Unlike strong acids which ionize to completion, weak acids exist as equilibrium mixtures, as shown by the double arrow. For most of the weak acids dealt with in chemistry 12, the molecular form is highly favored at equilibrium, and the concentrations of the ions are very low compared to that of the molecules. So a solution of acetic acid consists mostly of neutral CH3COOH molecules and the concentrations of the ions in this solution are very low. If we insert a conductivity apparatus into pure water, it does not conduct enough to make the bulb glow. Now we'll add some acetic acid to the water. The acetic acid molecules spread out to fill the solution. A small number of the acetic acid molecules ionize and the bulb glows dimly. Because there's a small number of ions present in the solution of a weak acid, the conductivity is not zero, but it is low. So weak acids that start out as neutral molecules, like CH3COOH, are weak electrolytes. So now that we know what weak acids are, where do we find them? You may recall that the six acids on the top left of the acid table are classified as strong acids. Remember, these are 100% ionized in aqueous solution. Species below hydronium on the left, all the way down to water, can act as weak acids. Some of these, including water, are amphiprotic, so they can also act as weak bases, as we'll see later. Just a quick word about the two species on the very bottom of the last side, hydroxide and ammonia. These cannot act as acids in aqueous solution. They are found on the right side of the acid table and are classified as bases. The only reason they're written here is that they happen to be conjugate acids of the bases O2- and NH2-. Notice they both have a single arrow pointing toward them, which is further verification that these are not acids. These reactions go only in reverse, not forward. Looking at the weak acids, it's important to understand that they get progressively weaker as we go down the left side of the table, from HiO3 to H2O. Because acids get weaker as we move down the table, we can also say that the degree of ionization decreases. This is indicated by the fact that the values of their ionization constant, Ka, get smaller as we move down the table. Take a look at these to verify this to yourself. Of course, we can also say that weak acids progressively get stronger as we move up on the left side from water at the bottom to HiO3 at the top. This means the degree of ionization increases as we move up. And again, this is reflected by the increase in Ka values as we move up. Molecular weak acids are indicated here by the red arrows. These are acids that are neutral molecules before they ionize. Because the degree of ionization decreases as we move down the table, it means that the number of dissolved ions present in one molar solutions of these molecular acids will decrease as we move down. So what do you think the trend in conductivity of molecular acids will be as we move down the column? Electrical conductivity depends on the number of dissolved ions in solution. So as we move down the column and the number of dissolved ions decreases, the conductivity of molecular acids also decreases. So if we were to compare the conductivity of phosphoric acid with that of boric acid, we would predict that phosphoric acid has higher conductivity than boric acid. We can also see that higher conductivity correlates with a higher value for the ionization constant Ka. Notice that many of the species that act as weak acids are ions to begin with. As expected, the ability of each of these to act as an acid decreases as we move down the left side of the table. This is reflected by a decrease in their Ka values as we move down. 
Because these are ions, they do not occur as substances themselves in nature. If it's an anion, it would need to have an accompanying cation. And if it's a cation, it would need to have an accompanying anion. For example, the HSO4- ion could be accompanied by the spectator cation Na+. These two ions would result from the dissociation of the salt sodium bisulfate NaHSO4. Similarly, the hydrogen oxalate ion HC2O4- could come from the dissociation of the salt potassium hydrogen oxalate KHC2O4. And the positive ion NH4+ could come from the dissociation of an ammonium salt like NH4Cl. The Cl- ion is a spectator here. Notice that the ammonium ion, NH4+, is low on the left side of the table, and its Ka value of 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10th is quite small. This means NH4+, is quite a weak acid. Because NH4+, is quite a weak acid, we might expect its conductivity to be weak. So let's try it. We'll set up a conductivity apparatus and add enough of the salt, NH4Cl, to produce a solution of 0.1 molar NH4Cl. Because NH4Cl is ionic, we know that it actually consists of a crystal lattice of NH4 plus and Cl minus ions. We show one of each ion here. Now we'll see what happens. The salt NH4Cl will quickly and completely dissociate into free ammonium and chloride ions. And notice the light bulb glows brightly to show that we now have high conductivity. As far as conductivity is concerned, it doesn't matter that NH4 plus is a weak acid. Because NH4Cl is a highly soluble ionic salt, it dissociates completely into ammonium and chloride ions, both with a concentration of 0.1 molar. So the total ion concentration in this solution is 0.1 plus 0.1, which is 0.2 molar, high enough to account for the high conductivity. Because NH4 plus is quite a weak acid, most of it will remain as 0.1 molar NH4 plus in solution. And only a tiny fraction of it will ionize into hydronium ions and ammonium molecules. This occurs to a very limited extent, so it will have no significant effect on the already high total ion concentration in this solution. So if we compare acetic acid with the ammonium ion, we see that NH4 plus is a much weaker acid than CH3COOH. However, 0.1 molar NH4 plus would have a higher conductivity than CH3COOH. This is because CH3COOH is a molecular weak acid. The only ions it produces in solution come from its limited ionization as a weak acid. Because 0.1 molar CH3COOH has few ions, it is a poor conductor or weak electrolyte. And although NH4 plus is a weaker acid than CH3COOH, NH4 plus is an ionic weak acid. 0.1 molar NH4 plus already has a high ion concentration, even before it undergoes acid ionization to form hydronium. Because it has a high ion concentration, it is a good conductor or strong electrolyte. Mm -hmm.